today will you stand as we worship thank you Lord it's great to be in your house today amen amen, amen. amen. let's put our hands together we serve a mighty powerful God amen
you for this moment. Lord, we cherish your presence. Your presence is not just something we're going to see one day. It's something we experience right now. And you said, we're two or three gathered together in my name. I'm in the midst. And Father, we just believe your word and we sense your presence here today. The Holy Spirit, you're able to do so many things in one moment. You heal the sick, you save the lost. You convict us of sin. You give us reassurance. You encourage. Father, you bless. And we just pray that right now, we just, we just say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here in this place, in this room today. In Jesus' name, we honor your presence. Everybody said amen. And you may be seated. Well, it's good to see you today. Uh, yeah, uh, last, last week we missed it. We were online. I was welcoming people online, just having fun with that, trying to keep up with my computer and my phone. Uh, I was trying. If I didn't say hello to everybody that came in and say, waved at me, I, I, I tried. <clears throat> how, many, how many of you people try to keep up with the technology that's going on and just sometimes you get frustrated but you try right so we, we try it uh, we uh, thank you for your prayer Jennifer's do, doing uh, well she isn't here today uh, she's uh, maybe had a little reawakened cough from from uh, from her COVID experience mainly she's just exhausted and part of that she's taken 
I've been taking care of her mom at the hospital, and so that's a little extra, <clears throat> extra thing. So, uh, uh, well, you know, she's fine. We're fine. She's just not here today, okay? Uh, and then uh, I didn't get sick. Now, last night I didn't feel great. This morning I'm not 100%, but I called my doctor, said, do you think it's okay for me to go? And he said, man, in fact, preach would be the best thing. Preach a two-hour sermon, best thing for you. So... Uh, <clears throat> I've been called out in the room right there. <laughs> Some of you want the name and number of the doctor. I know that. Let me have a talk with them. I will handle that right there. Well, i just tell you how quickly you were praying for me five minutes ago, and now you just turn on me. That's <clears throat> for the Herald, I've learned through the years, the crowd will turn on you quick right there. They, they, they will. So, uh, <clears throat> but we've got to, hey, some, some of you, uh, Tanya, her father's, he was on the respirator. Now he's off. Is he going to a room yet? Has it gone to a regular room? Has it gone to a regular room? Okay. But boy, what progress. And I know, I know, that's just uh, people have been praying with you and, and for him. And uh, absolutely, absolutely. Your prayers, your thoughts, your concerns. Family appreciates that. Brother Joe Cobb is, and I don't want to tell everybody's medical things, but Brother Joe Cobb's in uh, the hospital. He's got COVID and pneumonia. And, and so, they need, he needs prayer, but he's, he's making progress uh, uh, along the way. So, um, and then a few other people, you know, it's, it's, it's um, one of our families got the stomach bug this week, and they were never so glad to have a stomach bug. <laughs> praise God, it's just a stomach bug. It's, it was awful, but praise God, that's what it was. So, uh, it's all about perspective, isn't it? It's all about perspective. Well, uh, let me tell you some things that I think are, uh, I'm excited about, uh, first of all, I'm excited to be back here. I'm just, I talked to one of my pastor friends this week, and he, he was so disappointed. Uh, he pastors a great church here in the state, and, and, but he said, y you know, people haven't come back. And he said, I'm ready for them to come back. And, and I told him, I said, well, January is normally the time when people show up at church. I mean, you know, people that they've been thinking about coming and they, they have, it's kind of like Easter and you know, Christmas and, and people are going to make a special effort to be there. Or people that hadn't been in a while says, we're going to go. Well, the first week of January, second Sunday of January, that's like that. Uh, but this year it hasn't been because that fresh little variant came up and, and, and people were dealing with that. And I said, I'm believing that we're getting it behind us and out of the way in February is going to be in January this year. So, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, uh, and we got some things. Uh, let me just mention to you, next Sunday, am I correct? Next Sunday is February 6th. Time, time flies when you're, when you're having fun. Uh, February 6th, uh, we're going to have a brief business meeting or business meeting after, uh, about a 15-minute pause after our Sunday service. Just probably the best time when everybody's when it's convenient for everybody. Um, and so, um, just telling you that. I think it's in your bulletin, but I want to mention that. And then the next Sunday, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Now, I know y'all rooting for, I don't know who you're rooting for. My saints are out, and so I got, I got no real interest in it, but we always like doing something big and special around Super Bowl time. And so we got a special speaker that's going to be with us. And they've never spoke here before. In fact, they never spoke anywhere before. But our oldest son, David, is going to be speaking on February the 13th. He's been wanting to do this for a, a year and a half, and, and so it's, it's worked out. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, I bet Mom makes it for that one. That's what I bet. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and then on February the 20th, the next week, uh, and uh, well, I mean, that's just as though that couldn't be top. Uh, the, the next week, we're, we've been talking about this for a while. I, I, you know, there are just some songs that sound better when a choir or an ensemble does it. And so uh, we've got some folks that said, you know, if y'all have a choir, I'll, I'll, I'll get up there and I'll be part of that. Well, now it's time to sign up. Because we're going to, uh, Andrew's going to be here on the 20th. He'll be leading worship and directing the choir along with Cherie. And, and uh, <clears throat> it's, I don't know what all they're going to do, but you can sign up today. Hey, back home, you're like, well, I want to be part of that. Well, come on. Uh, sign up, get us your email, and he'll send you the, 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 the songs and the parts. And, and then, hey, it's going to be a great day. Like I said, February, I'm excited about February, man. That's, uh, 
that's, uh, hey, guys, I just about to give you a warning, February 14th, it's going to come on, happens every year, so I'm just <laughs> helping you out with that too. Uh, you know, in fact, probably one of the, one of the uh, folks that's listening here, uh, that tuned in, that were tuned in last week, uh, are Raymond and Janice Kitchens. And uh, I, I called uh, Raymond this week because 42 years ago, I did, they live in Petal, but I, I, I called them because 42 years ago, this past Tuesday or something, I performed their wedding. It was my first one. And I just said, look, I'm your friend, and y'all made me look good because 42 years later, you're still, <laughs> you're still in this thing together. And I just want to call you and tell you, in case you forgot it, just, just helping a brother out is what I'm doing. He, of course, uh, they knew they'd already been celebrating. So happy anniversary to you guys out there. All right, uh, there's a lot of things. Today's going to be good, too. And it's not, we don't have to wait to February. Today's going to be good. i got some really good stuff that I, I, I want to share with you. Um, you know, we're in this series talking about, it, it's you, 2.022, of course, with the year. We're talking about getting the upgrade, getting the update, becoming the best version of you. How many believe there's a better version of you than the one that's sitting or standing right now, all right? Yeah, and, and, and I want to I wanna be a little better next week than I was this week. You know, you can, you can kind of feel the progress as we're, even here in the room, we're making some progress. And, it, you know, uh, uh, God told Israel when, when they went to Canaan, I'm not going to let you inhabit it all at one time. It, it's too much for you. But little by little, you're going to take the land. And so God wants us to have upgrades along the way. He wants us to update where we are. He wants your marriage to be a better marriage in 2022 than it was in 2021. He, look, I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better husband. I, I want to be a, a, a better leader. And, and, but I, I've got to be willing to let God bring some changes in my thoughts, in my actions, in my ways, and, and I feel it here. We're, we're developing, it's, whether it's the music or just the feel of the house, it just feels good in the house, and it's just feeling better all the time. Okay, uh, last, uh, last message we brought a couple weeks ago, we, we, we talked about Romans 12 and 2, and we talked about how this transformation takes place. God who created us knows that we, that we tend to drift from purpose, don't we? I mean, we get locked in, but we're like the people going to the gym on January the 1st, and then by February the 1st, we're not there anymore. God knows we tend to drift from our focus, from our purpose, from our purity, and, and we lose the focus. And, and so He created a way for us to be renewed. And one of the ways that He does that, Romans 12 and 2, we covered last time, it says, don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. It's circle the word transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that, this is one of the key ways that we're renewed, or, or that we're <coughs> transformed, <coughs> excuse me, it's by the renewing of our mind. And one of the key ways that we renew our mind, we said, is through meditation. And so, this is all, there's not one thing, there's several things. And today I want to talk about a second thing that is involved in this process of transforming us or helping us go from 2.021 to 2.022 or whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> the, the, the upgrade. And, and, and that is, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit and, and the way the Holy Spirit affects change in, in our life. <clears throat> I also want to take some time. Uh, today and talk about the difference. I want to draw the contrast of what we mentioned last time. I want to take it a little further. I want to talk about the contrast between the instant change that takes place and the uh, progressive change. Okay? Or maybe I should say instant change for your outline. Everything's on the left. The instant change and then you progress it. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, let, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. That's a key verse for today. And it says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <clears throat> now one translation says, where the Spirit is the Lord, <clears throat> there's liberty. Because the Spirit of the Lord is everywhere. 
Uh, he can't go anywhere. Uh, David said, though I ascend to the heavens or, or, or go into the depth of hell, you're there. I can't get away from your presence. Your presence is, he's omnipresent. So he's, he's everywhere. But there's not always a liberty. <clears throat> I've been in churches where there wasn't liberty. <laughs> right? It's usually called Liberty Baptist or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you have to be careful when you, I'm sorry. Lord, God help me. There's some Liberty Baptist people out there listening. Man, I don't know where, you, where it is. Whatever, but at, at any rate, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> In the room and, and somewhere else, you know it too. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, there isn't always that freedom. But what where the Spirit is Lord, where He's in charge, where He is given honor, where He is exalted, there's freedom. Okay? So, <clears throat> then it says, but we all with open face, and, and I told you <clears throat> somewhere during the year I want to do this series about uh, unmask. Uh, because Moses had a veil, and <clears throat> he wore it when he went to the, came, when he went up in the mountain and got uh, uh, in contact with the, the with the holy presence of God for 40 days. And, and he came back and his face glowed and the people couldn't stand looking. So he wore a veil in order so they could look at him. But have you know that the glory fades? <clears throat> and after a while, the shine wasn't there anymore. So he, but he kept it on because he didn't want people to know it was gone. I, I've seen Christians like that, haven't you? And so they wear things or they do things that make people think that they're where they need to be because they don't want people to know they're not as close to God as they used to be. Because people have this expectation, if we don't, they'll say, well, what's wrong with them? Um, so he says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, that's like in a mirror, we're seeing the glory of the Lord, we're changed in the same way. So we look in there, it's like a glass and a mirror, and we see the glory of God, and we realize that we are reflecting that, and we are being changed into the same image. We are being changed. There's that word, changed. And remember last time we talked about the word um, transform, be you transform in Romans 12 too. The Greek word there is metamorpho, from which we get metamorphosis. It's only found four times in the New Testament. Uh, and, and it's here and, and in Second. Corinthians, where we just read, you're being changed. It's a process. I want you to see that. It's, a pro it's not an instant thing. It is a process. You've got to get that. Okay? There is an instant change. But there is some change God does in us that is not instant. And everybody wants antiques made while we wait. But there's some things that God does in us that's going to take time. And the wheel spinning on the computer, and you're like, is this thing really updating, <clears throat> or is it locked up? I think it's just locked up. I think I need to shut it down, reboot. No, you need to be patient and wait a little while, because that's letting, that's telling you it's in a process. I know you don't believe it. I know, but go your own way, do something else, and come back later, and it'll reboot. Sometimes you say, do not turn off during this time. Yeah, but I think I need to. No, you don't. So God has changed us. <clears throat> We're being changed. Oh, by the way, the other two places uh, that it's, it's found is in the accounts of the Mount of Transfiguration when he, he was changed. It was, okay. <clears throat> the, the, the Christian, uh, th let me make this just strong statement here. This is just something for you to lock in because some people have been in church for years that don't have this. They, don't, they haven't grasped this. The Christian life is not just the journey to a better place, but the journey to a better person. We're on our way to heaven, but that's not all that this is about, it is <clears throat> just going to heaven. <clears throat> I thank God for the life insurance part of the gospel, but that's not all there is. If he was just interested in taking us to a better place, to heaven, he could kill us in the baptistry. Probably most of us have a better shot, right? <clears throat> Really? Just take us on out right there. Just, do you, do you confess he's Lord? Here, let's baptize you, be sure, and then, pfft. okay. Hold him under a long time. <clears throat> he wants to change us. 
He wants his Holy Spirit to change us. He doesn't just want to take us to heaven. He wants to change us while we're here. <clears throat> now, 2 Corinthians 3, we read from if you, later, take some time, most of that chapter is talking about the contrast of the Spirit um, we have through Christ versus the Old Testament law. I'm talking about this is the way it was, but this is the, the glory of, uh, of the new uh, covenant and how it works. <clears throat> Because the law, in fact, you're talking about upgrades, what the law could not do in that he said, here's what I'm going to do. I, I've, got a, I've got a new covenant. I'm going to give you an upgrade because the law was powerless to do some things in you. The law could help you be a better person if you obeyed it. It says, honor your father and mother. That's a good thing to do. You, you know, that's good. You're a better person if you honor your father and mother. Um, but you've got to obey it. But the Holy Spirit in us helps change our attitudes. It helps change our perspective. It gives us a want to if we're filled with it and if we're yielded to it. And obedience is certainly key, but the flesh doesn't like to be ob obedient. Mine doesn't. Maybe yours does. Mine doesn't. Suggest that we're going fast and your flesh will tell you, no, 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 that's, that's not a good idea at all. It doesn't want to be obedient. The part of the whole work of the Holy Spirit is to create an internal change and give us a desire for spiritual things. That's why you listen to the whisper of the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you to do things that will feed the spiritual man. And it's, it's, that's just an important thing. Now let me, let me, let me go deep for just a little, a little while today. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to really correct or establish any theology. I'm sharing out of some revelation that, that I've gotten through the years. And, and boy, I see this, okay? And I've, I've talked about it last time some. I want to talk about it more today. I, I want you to, let's think for a little bit about instant change versus progressive change. And we said at the beginning, when you're born again, that's, that's an instant word. When you're born again of the Spirit, um, all things are made new, okay? And then there is a process of change we're going through. And remember, this is a process. It's going to, it's metamorphosis. It doesn't happen instantly. It takes a while. Progressive change. Embrace both. Be thankful for both of them. Don't, don't get all upset because things aren't all happening just like that. There is a process of growth in the body. Praise God, you're born, you're born. But there's a long process of becoming an adult. Long process of becoming the person and the developing the person that really is that person. They're here. But there's a lot being formed uh, in, in their life as life goes on. So let me begin uh, this part of things by, by talking about sin just a moment and defining sin. And what I found is when we do this, everybody has their list. And there's some things, you know, people say, when people tell you, preacher, I want you to preach against sin more, what they mean is preach against everybody else's sin. <laughs> found that out. <laughs> and, and they've got them ranked too. And whatever they're doing isn't ranked near the top. It's, it's just, it's a minor thing. But boy, what they're doing, they, oh, they need that. Preach it hard, preacher. So there are 214 times in the New Testament that sin is mentioned. And 174 uh, times is the Greek word hamartia. And it simply means missing the mark. It's like an archer that shoots and he doesn't hit the bullseye. He misses the mark. And, and anybody here ever miss the mark? Yeah, I think we all have. I, I did once back in the early 90s. But yeah, we've all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In, in fact, they're the sins of commission and the sins of omission. A little boy in Sunday school said, is that the sins we're supposed to have done and we didn't? <laughs> he learns a lot of things in, 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 in Sunday school. <laughs> yeah, what, they, what they asked me, asked the class, said, what, what, what do we have to do in order to receive forgiveness for our sins? Somebody said, sin. <laughs> First thing you got to do is sin. <laughs> well, yes and no. Because <clears throat> let me go a little deeper here and talk about this. I see a difference I'm not trying to split hairs. I'm trying to show you something that's revelation, okay? I see a difference between sin and sins, okay? Sin 
and sins. Because sin, I put in your outline, refers to two things. It refers both to committed acts, and could even be acts that should have been done that didn't, because he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, it's a sin. But you do something that violates God's law, violates what the Holy Spirit has told you to do, that's a committed act. But it also refers to the condition because we're born in sin. We're born with a sin condition. Before you tell the first lie or do the first thing wrong. And can I tell you, again, I'm not trying to butt heads with anybody of your thoughts or theology or whatever, but just want to tell you, people don't go to hell because of what the sin acts are, but because of the sin condition. Every person is born with a birth defect. And Romans 5.19 says, For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, also through the obedience of the one man, of course the first man was Adam, the second man is Christ, the many will be made righteous. So let's, let, let's, let's look at this just a moment about the instant versus the progressive. And I put some, uh, several things, we'll move through them real quickly in your outlines. I know you see a lot of blanks, you think, Lord, we hadn't filled hardly anything in. But here we go. You're beginning to believe that doctrine, aren't you? <laughs> on, on one side, we have the condition of sin. Sin is a, as a condition. The other side, we have sin as acts of behavior. Okay? The sin condition affects eternal life. This is, this is heaven or hell. The sin acts affects life on earth. People go to hell because they reject the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I, I don't want to go deep down this. You've heard me say many times, I think it's important. I say it at a lot of funerals because people say, well, if nobody, I tell you what, if grandma didn't go to heaven, ain't nobody else need to even try. And, and I understand what they're saying. Boy, she was a good person. She set the bar high. But the truth of the matter is you don't go to heaven because you, you, you did a lot of good things. That's, it's not, it's not, I don't, Grandma may have told you this, but Grandma was wrong. It's not good people who go to heaven and bad people who go to hell. It's saved people who go to heaven and unsaved people who go to hell. It's, that's, that's just important to get. And, and the truth of the matter is that we need salvation for both heaven and earth. There is a process of salvation that's not part of the eternal. And there's and the grace of God. I want to talk about that briefly today too. The grace of God is needed for, for both. Okay? Now the instant change at new birth is called justification. Now you got one line, you put it over there. It's it's justification. So that and, and, and I couldn't do left and right on the little screens up here, so I just put them in different colors. So that's what that is. So the instant change is called justification. Uh, uh, I, I love it. The most simple version of it is that being justified means it's just as if I'd never sinned. Justification is the doctrine that God pardons, that He accepts. He declares a sinner to be just, not on the basis of what that person does, but on the basis of Christ's righteousness. It's legal standing changes. Romans 4, I love Romans 4, maybe my most favorite chapter in the Bible. But verse 4 says, Now to the one who works... If you're working for your salvation, and that's how you're trying to get it, if, you, if you're working for something, wages are not credited as a gift but as an obligation. Right? <clears throat> they pay you because they owe you. It's not a gift. But the gift of God's grace, the gift of eternal life, it's the gift of eternal life. It's not because you do enough things to earn it. So if you're working for it, what, what you receive is, is an obligation, not a gift. However, to the one who doesn't work, and that doesn't mean you don't work, it means you're not working to get and gain. God's ordained us to good works. I mean, You've got to keep things in perspective. But who trusts God, who justifies the ungodly. And I know that bothered me for a long time. I don't want to get bogged down here. Mm. Because we want to see people be godly before we say they're justified. But He justifies the ungodly. Why do you want to charge people for what you got for free? Freely you have received, freely give. 
But the person who doesn't work but instead he's trusting God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Now understand when God credits righteousness it's an instant credit. I mean again you're either saved or you're not saved. It's like being pregnant. You're not almost present, pregnant, kind of pregnant. You either are or you're not. Not well I think I am. Well no you either are or, or you aren't. And, and so the credit of righteousness is it's either on the books or it's not on the books. And he puts it on the books apart from works. It's not because you've done enough and you gradually make it. It's a part, it has nothing to do with your works. This is the grace and goodness of God. And now, uh, the change that's ongoing is a process called sanctification. Now we, we called it transformation last time. Uh, sanctification is another uh, uh, New Testament word that talks about we were justified, now we're being sanctified. Sanctification is a process. Justification is instant. Sanctification is a process. We are, and, and I'll show it to you here in, in a few verses. But let me, let me explain a few other things that we go, and let's, let's keep this contrast going and fill in a few more blanks for you. In the instant He died for me, okay? The instant He died for me. The progressive, Paul says, I die daily. I'm keeping the camera crew busy back here, I know. I die daily. I die daily not so I can go to heaven. I die daily so I can grow and mature and develop and be the person God wants me to be. Okay? I mean, I'm just telling you because people get this confused and, and they go through a process where they're not uh, surrendered and submitted and the devil tells them they're not really saved. And so they fight all of this and there was no use. Listen, it's a process. I die daily. I, I, now, it didn't all that happens that God wants to happen to me didn't happen back here. This got me started. But this is a path I'm on. This is a process. Here's another contrast. Instant is about his cross. He went to the cross. He died. That cross is all we need for eternal life. That's what he provided. He said, it is finished. He didn't say to be continued. It is finished. He did it. But on this side, he said, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross. I've got a cross. This is about this process, this sanctification, this progressive change is about my cross. Take up my cross and follow him. My cross isn't about getting me to heaven. My cross is about being a better person, not losing my temper. When I get upset. Not making everybody else lose their temper. <laughs> you ever know somebody that back bragged about not ever being in a wreck, but you think, yeah, but I've seen you cause three or four. <laughs> so maybe you didn't lose your temper, but you made somebody else lose theirs. Instant change is about whose you are, who you belong to, whose you are. I'm a child of the King. Our Father, which art in heaven. My Father, Abba, Father, I cry. Over here, it's about who I am. It's about who you are. It's about your person, your personality. But look, I just want you to understand, you're not, you don't have a good enough attractive enough, kind enough, gentle enough, outgoing enough personality to talk your way into heaven. That's not going to get you in. Well, when I get the pearly gates, here's what I'm going to, no, no, no. It's not how it works. Okay? You, you, you get in for one reason, and that's because of what He has provided. It's here, okay? It's here. Now, some people get confused about this, so let, let me bring home this point. Grace is not just available to us or intended to get us to heaven. How many you know we need grace to make it to heaven? And grace, somebody said, it's goodness received at Christ's expense. That's a good little acronym for it. Uh, of course, I, I love that grace is God giving us what we don't deserve in contrast with mercy, which is God not giving us what we do deserve. 
I'm thankful for both of them. But grace doesn't just come to us one time. Grace is a continual work also of the Holy Spirit in our life. And in that sense, it is an influencer to us, guiding us, keeping us from uh, uh, falling off the track or the wagon or whatever it is. And let, let me give you this verse here. This verse says it powerfully in Titus 2. For the grace of God that brings salvation, instant change, has appeared to all men. But it didn't just bring us salvation and leave us. What does it do? In the progressive work, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives where? In this present age. This is about heaven. This is about the present age. And the grace of God not only gets us, well, I know the camera people, God bless you back there, making people dizzy at home probably, but you, you got it, keep going, brother. Just go, hey, it's not going to get better for a few more minutes. The grace of God gets us where we're ready for heaven, but he doesn't just leave us. He teaches us to say no to ungodly passions, ungodly lust, ungodly thoughts. And so, when we're in this, it's not that we're not saved. It's that we're, we need more of the Holy Spirit in our life to live a victorious and overcoming life. But the, I see so many people so beat up because they, they haven't been perfect, because they said something they should have said or they did something they should have done. And people reinforce it and say, I thought you were a Christian. And they just want to give up. What's even worse is, I thought you were a preacher. You may just be a Christian, bad. Yeah, but it hurt when I hit my thumb too. Okay, all right. Over here, we're made new. We're made new. Any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm jumping ahead. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I had a, a, a minister told me one time, he said, you know, God doesn't want to make you better. He wants to make you new. And well, it's not either or, it's both. He makes us new at new birth. But he makes us better as we go through life. Does that make any sense to you? So, um, the Holy Spirit is working in both realms. It happens in the beginning. By one, it's a new birth experience. Why? You're born again of the Spirit. By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. But the work of the Holy Spirit isn't just in that moment of new birth. Instead, through the process, let me give you a few verses here. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. So the Holy Spirit, He said, I, I must go away, but I'm sending the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and, and He'll be in you. And, and, and in fact, there's several things the New Testament tells us the Holy Spirit's going to do in this process. Here it says He's going to give us godly desires. He's going to give you the desire to do what pleases Him. If you don't have the right kind of desires, you need to, you need to listen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay? He guides us into truth. The Holy Spirit. This is a process. Oh, is it John 14, 26? Says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will lead and guide you into all truth, if you'll be led and guided. So that's what he's doing. He brings us into an intimacy with God. He gives us power to become overcomers. Greater is he that's within you. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. That's not, that's not heaven. This is the process. This is progressive change. You need to know this. You don't need to know this when you stand at the pearly gates. Greater is he that's in me. No, you need to know that when they're not treating you right at your job. <laughs> Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He joins to empower our prayer. Sometimes the Bible says we don't know what to pray, how to pray. What does the Bible say? The Holy Spirit does. Makes intercession for us. I'm telling you, what's that? That's not for getting us into heaven. That's for dealing with all the turkeys you got to deal with in the neighborhood. 
Yeah, somebody said it's hard to soar with the eagles when you got to live with the turkeys like I did. There's a process of regeneration. There's a process of renewal. There's a transformation. There's a sanctification. I'm just telling you, all of us are in this place, and all of us are in the struggle. And every day doesn't go perfect. And some days it reveals to you you need to grow a little bit more. And some days you look back and say, you know what? I grew a lot through that experience. Okay, here's a, here's a verse that I hope just ties it all together, and we're going to be done here in, in, a, in about three minutes. For by Hebrews 10, 14. This is a beautiful verse. For by one sacrifice, that's Jesus on the cross, obviously, isn't it? By one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever. Say with me, perfect forever. Perfect forever. That's, that's pretty locked tight, isn't it? He has made perfect forever who? Those who are being made perfect. Holy. How can you improve something that's perfect? I mean, look here. How can you? <laughs> it took you a while to catch on there, but thank you. How do you improve something that's perfect? Fonz would do this right here. Eh, he said. <laughs> you can't improve that. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Because perfect refers to the condition standing. He declared you righteous. He declared he has made you perfect forever. But on this part of the world, you're still being made holy. We're not there yet. We're not perfect forever while we're living here. But when God sees us, he doesn't see all the trash and the mess that we've created. He sees us in a different way. And if we could see ourselves as God sees us, we wouldn't call ourselves stupid and ignorant and what's wrong with you, you're a moron. We'd say, God, this is not who you've called me to be. This is not who you declare that I am. I'm going to align myself with what God says about me rather than what everybody else is saying about me or what I'm saying about myself. I want to be in agreement with that perfect forever person. Because people over here think I'm not really saved. Because if I did, I wouldn't have those thoughts. I wouldn't have said that. No. You who are perfect forever are still needing to be made holy. And that's what the Holy Spirit's doing. Okay, there's, there's, we're not the first one. I'm not the first one that shared this. There was an Anglican cleric back in 1763 who wrote the words to this tune it's in our hymn books it's actually been changed some because somebody else later kind of changed some of the words around but you'll 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 recognize it it says rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood that sacrifice from thy wounded side which flowed, listen, be of sin the double cure, saves from wrath and make me pure. I needed to do both. Save me from wrath. Thank God I am saved from wrath. But I still need to be pure. And I'm not just where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Thank you, Lord. All oh, the rest of it's good too. Not the labor of my hands could fulfill thy law's commands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Another part of the verse says, In my hand no gift I bring, no price I bring, simply to thy cross I claim. Rock of ages. The double cure. Okay. I'm done. I did it and got three minutes left, praise God. You know, why don't you guys come up and let's sing this. There's a course. I, I think we sang it last week maybe. That's okay. I can preach this again next week. This is fun. Good stuff. This is good stuff. I'm going to tell you. Good stuff. 
because this, this, this course, I, mean, I think, if we got the right one, this one says, Spirit of the living God, I just want to hear your voice. Hang on every word. And, and then it just, it says, it changes us. For when, when you speak, it changes us. It changes who we are and what we seek. And that's what I want, the Holy Spirit, to bring change in my life. I'm ready for heaven. I'm in no hurry to go. I mean, if you get the group up for tonight, I'm not wanting to get on it. But uh, I will say the more you go in life, the, the better it sounds sometimes. But you know what? While I'm here, I want to do something to make the world a better place. I want to encourage you along the way. I want to strengthen you. I want to build your faith. I want to make, I, want, I don't want to just be a better person. I want to help make you a better person. Now, I don't know how we're going to do that with Sarah. I don't know. She's almost perfect forever right now. But somewhere in there I can help. I just know somewhere in there I can help. I'm not sure how. The Holy Spirit can change us. And make me better, Lord. Make me better, Lord. Let's stand. Let's just stand and sing. And while, you, while you're standing, just, just let, let the Holy you can start it. Let the Holy Spirit just flow in your heart. Let Him whisper to your heart today at home. Let, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God.
Well, He is in this room. And when you come in this room, when you do what only you can do, you're here in the room and you're doing that. And we're grateful for it. You know, at home, maybe in the room, somebody that's not fully committed or surrendered to the Lord, this is the day for it. I mean, man, I, I, I don't have a more convincing argument for you. This is uh, it's just a great, it's a great word for you to just to say, this is the moment in the day I, I, make, the, I make the turnaround. Father, help them right now. Help that person right now just to acknowledge that they need you for their salvation, that they can't do anything and they just surrender to you and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. I have faith in what you've done and I trust you. I trust you today. Just pray that prayer, simple prayer of faith. And let me know. You can, you can inbox me at my, my Facebook. You can uh, communicate with the church or online right now. You can say something and let us know you're making a decision uh, today to follow Christ. Amen. Ushers, come on. And <clears throat> well, have you, you got anything from the Word today? Yes. I didn't amuse up my whole two hours, and I, I think I got it said. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the gift and the giver. Thank you for the people who faithfully uh, surrender their, their life to you and, and their heart and, and, and have a commitment that financially helps us to, to do what needs to be done. Father, I, I just am so grateful for the people that uh, encourage us and their giving is a, is a difference-making giving. Bless them, I pray. Increase the flow of finances into their businesses and lives so they can continue to do even more to help us further the cause of the kingdom. Bless them, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our hearts, come now and have your way, cause when you speak, when you spirit of the Lord's here say this to you and then we'll leave you know today when we came in it was just so it was so pleasant coming it wasn't I Amen. mean Amen. people we were laughing everybody loved everybody I Lord I don't know how, how we can leave any better than we came in it felt so good at the beginning so don't mess it up and be mean to somebody on the way out <laughs> I love you God loves you Next Sunday, bring somebody, round somebody up and bring them. It's going to be a great Sunday. God bless you. Hey, <clears throat> Jamara, uh, who isn't here today, Jamara and her daughter, you saw added, wonderful people. We baptized her. And Billy and Betsy, good, good, good to have them added as new members too. They got a new grandbaby. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Praise God. <laughs> All right. God bless you. You're dismissed.